Uh, Remember the board of education of the Goshen Central School District will hold a birth board workshop tonight. You're in the district administration building and you can through YouTube for the purpose of discussing board goals and objectives. Today is Monday, November 15th, 2021. That's my job. Chris? It's okay. I'm going to spin around to the board. I want to first thank all of our building and our district administrators for being present tonight. This will be the first time that they are also seeing our draft proposal given to the Board of Education for purposes of our collaborative uh, goals and objectives for the 21 22 school year. So, in reflection upon the proposal that I prepared to present to the Board of Education, I reflected deeply, and I apologize if my back is anyone, on using the SMART goal process. If you've never been through a SMART goal setting process, obviously it's an acronym for goals that are very specific, goals that can be measured, are achievable in the time frame that they are specified for, relevant to issues that are surrounding the organization, and are timed down to be completed within that stated parameter. When I thought about what was to be uh, completed for this year, or at least proposed to the Board of Education to be completed for this year, I really reflected on issues that we had already discussed. Things that had come to light, things that had come to surface, with the exception really of, of the very first uh, proposal on the plan. Speaking with some classroom teachers and administrators that have served in the district for an extended period of time, it has been many, many years since the district has worked on the creation of a strategic plan. The reason that I propose this to the Board of Education this evening is a strategic plan works to build harmony, if you will, between the district and the community itself. It allows you to have over a specified period of time, common goals, common priorities, that again can be measured when you're working on budget setting processes, when you're working on goal setting processes, when you're working on anything related to curriculum, social emotional learning, anything that you want to be included in your strategic plan, again, it sets a bar for you to work towards over a period of time and prevents you from deviating off course, if you will. That's not to say that you don't address issues as they arise, but as far as being prepared and having a common understanding between the district and the community itself, what direction that we're headed in. I included two local district strategic plans for the board to take a look at. Both Newburgh and Warwick go through this process regularly. And I include two lower Hudson districts strategic plans, both from Chappaqua and Scarsdale as well. The hyperlinks were included in the proposal as well. If we were to set course for a strategic plan, we could very well finish this by the end of this calendar year to be implemented for the new school year going into 22-23. A well-crafted strategic plan allows for input from community members, obviously from the Board of Education, students, faculty, staff, anyone that we want to be included in the process would have the ability to really sit down voice their concerns, share what they would like to see, and target those specific goals. If we do move forward with this, I would suggest no more than a three-year window right now. Some strategic plans are as long as five years. I think as we're seeing our schools evolve, not just in Goshen, but throughout the area, the concerns that we are seeing obviously need to be addressed really more in the short and medium term. I don't think we're in a position yet where we really can look out as long as five years. If we keep going, Maureen, I'll go through everything and then be happy to uh, answer any questions at the end. One of the ongoing pieces that I've been discussing both with the board and with the school administration is really taking a look at our district guidance plan. Our current district guidance plan, uh, I will not say is, uh, that we are out of compliance, but certainly needs to be revisited. New state regulations that were adopted several years ago talk about resources and supports that need to be put in place from K-12. It addresses specific things in terms of staffing. It addresses social-emotional support. 
not just special education mandates, but also for general education students as well. Our current plan that sits on the district website only speaks to grades six through 12. Again, while I will not say that we are out of compliance, we are staffed within our elementary buildings, there is more that we can do. I believe that in taking a look at that, we could properly staff our buildings. We could, on the secondary level, specifically take a look at the college planning process with our high school staff. I think there's more that we can do there. And I think in collaboration with that, we also can look at the way in which we communicate to families through that process as well. Again, if we are able to put a team of individuals together, this gives us an opportunity to have the plan revised, presented to the Board of Education, adopted before the end of this school year, and again, in place for the 22-23 school year. Go to bullet point three now. We also, uh, together with the Board of Education, specifically with our Director of Facilities, need to take a look at our use of facilities policy. It's no hidden secret that the district has initiated a great amount of upgrades to our district facilities, inclusive of our high school auditorium, our steam labs, our classrooms, air conditioned space in the high school, the new addition of athletic fields. Our current policy and fee schedules probably are not in line with the upgrades that we have made to those facilities. I think looking at other surrounding districts, what they have done in terms of some different options to staggering the fee schedule, to itemizing it for different rooms, different spaces, different parts of the district is in our best interest to protect the work that we have done, protect that investment, but also still have that good outreach with uh, those community agencies that we want to work with to allow them to come in and be able to use our district facilities. I think if the board policy committee continues to meet, continues to look at some of the evidence that we've already pulled to look at some of the surrounding districts, I think that we could adopt a new policy prior to the end of the school year to be implemented again in the new school year. Finally, recommendation number four is some of the ongoing work that the Board of Education has already begun. I know that the COVID pandemic certainly heightened the need for us to look at air quality and air circulation within the building, but now that we're uh, preparing and we will be seeing it later at the regular, uh, regular part of the business meeting, the cost estimate presentation from Lan and Gerard, we need to make a decision on what direction we are going to head in terms of HVAC work in the district. What is going to transpire is there's many districts in the area that will have, have received a, a significant amount of federal funding that will have the option also to be looking at facilities upgrades for HVAC and indoor air quality. In doing so, we will be one amongst many that will be going to Albany for approval for different improvements that we may or may not choose to ask the state to allow us to do. There are time-bound issues that are related to the federal monies with any combination of capital reserve savings that the board may choose to make. I would recommend that we want to make sure that we begin this process as soon as possible. Again, this is just for the commencement of the project. We need to commit to that decision so that we can stay on track to make sure that we allocate and appropriate those funds for any scope of work that the board authorizes the administration to move forward with. Again, you'll hear that scope of work and the cost estimates later tonight from Land and Gerard Associates. But thinking about a time frame, we would have to think about when we would present that to the public for their consideration. What combination of both district reserve and or federal funding do we want to put forth to the community? And again, then starting to map out how far out does that proposal take us for a vote and where we want that vote to sit. So again, these are four high priority items, again, that over my first few months back here as superintendent, that has certainly been on my desk regularly and have been brought to my attention regularly. I think this focus in collaboration with the district administration, presenting these items to the Board of Education for adoption and approval, will set us on a good course to be achieved by the end of the 21-22 school year. So I'm happy to address questions. Again, if there are other items that we need to consider to be included that are not here besides these four, 
obviously the, the time for those to be discussed and potentially added or anything taken off. Um, now going back in years on guidance, you know, it's one of the biggest um, conversations I call them that we get a lot and have had for years. I think we've improved. Um, some of the things I thought that worked in the past that maybe because of the pandem pandemic we haven't done is uh, some roundtables that included parents that went through the process already. We brought in some college administrators, obviously guidance counselors, things like that. So I think that's maybe something we can work in. Um, I think the parent aspect is, is interesting because um, they've been through it. You know, there's some tips out there, I think, that parents can share with parents that guidance counselors can, or even college administrators. Um, I think maybe we can reach down that college planning process the eighth grade, ninth grade level. And I think what, what kids don't understand, and parents don't understand, is the great point I was start counting early, is as early as eighth grade, we take ninth grade classes. So I would, I would ask that to be included in the kids. And if you look at the, I included the Navion planning software, when we start to push down into the middle schools, again, you're, you're spot on. Some of the things that we were doing pre-pandemic started to address some of those issues. But I think if we're going to take the time and make this one of our goals, and you're hitting one half of, of really what we need to think about this, we need to look at is, is how we have the di district both staffed and programmed in accordance with where the regulations are. But also second to that, this is a very important part of the college planning process at the secondary <laughs> level. We need to get back to some of the things that we do well, making sure that we're pushing down to eighth grade making sure that the college planning process is clearly articulated to families and whatever we put pen to paper on or that we put on a screen that, that parents can read, that we'll follow through on. Can I, can I ask a question too? And I don't know, I don't know if we've done it in the past, maybe we have and we're not aware of it, but, but the students that aren't on that track or maybe they're on a vocational track, I don't, I don't know if we've really done enough on that track for people and I know we had talked about in the past segue off of this a little bit, but maybe tied into it is you know some uh, internships. I know we do that on the business side, but I know there's a lot of local people, especially in today's labor environment, that are probably I know we go through both seats for some of this too, but uh, maybe that's some better collaboration we can kind of work into. Yeah, and, and that would pull in what we're doing in our business department if we were going to look to expand that because you're absolutely right right now not to be stereotypical the internship placements that we do are almost holistically on the white collar side yeah. we, we do not dig in if you will to what blue collar vocations may be available not a bad thing it's just the reality of where we are considering the additions that we've made in our steam suite how can we better partner to start to address some of those issues and like that approach just Definitely a lot of local people that would be interested in that local employer. Anybody else on guidance or other comments? I would just say to your point too, like when you were talking about the kids and exploring college, like I like the idea of it even starting younger, like even to be like sixth grade on. So that you know you can set those goals early as a student, and just to give you experience and exposure to something that maybe you don't have otherwise. So I like the idea of pushing it down even younger. When we started, um, I'll use the example of the world history class that students can loop and take in ninth and tenth grade, the AP class. The department heads and the teachers started to push down at one time into the eighth grade. Miss Carmen, I'm going to guess that they haven't done that in the last two three years. Similar to doing that, we can start to have the counselors partner together to really explore the college planning process even earlier. And just to kind of jump off of what Jason was saying with the internships, uh, I know some school districts will do what's called a senior experience, and some of the different programs have names tied to them, but ultimately it's the senior experience, and that allows for the 
internship in you know, more blue collar and it might not necessarily be connected to what they want to go to school for, but just something that they have an interest in. Right? So they can explore that and there's certain curriculum that they can follow in order to yeah. do that. And, and models like that, those are, are much more flexible models. We right now assign a specific teacher, a career internship coordinator to make all these placements. Many models like that say to the student, okay, go out and find it. We'll have a teacher coordinator that's here to, to sign off and review everything with you, so that it's incumbent upon the student. So we'd have to be mindful if we open it up wide because right now our scope is much more narrow. We maybe hit how many gen per year? Kids that go out on internships, 40, 45 at most. Last year was even up higher than uh, we're probably looking at 70 this year. Right. Up as we open the additional sections, right. But nevertheless, we don't hit the whole class. We don't have an opportunity for the whole class to go. So somewhere in the middle, probably going to be the sweet spot. If we even, like I said, want to open it even further where everyone has the opportunity, there may be a, a happy medium to be able to achieve. I think to your point, theoretically, can't Lamonte still go to Does she have them both? Both sections? So maybe that, to your point, maybe if we went the direction that went to work before we go, maybe we could try that in and Theodore and try to get the local people to it in. Yep. And we're not doing that on purpose. Yep. So maybe we can try to well, use his expertise as well. Just a thought. Do my job? I'll keep it here. Get out of here. Thank you, John. The, just, and again, I know I'm repeating myself, forgive me. The one thing I do want to take a look at in this process is really how are we staffing all of our buildings as well. Right now, we do not have a guidance counselor in the, uh, the K2 building. Again, talking about appropriate age level development, meeting the spirit of the regular and the word of the regulation at the same time. How do we look at best utilizing our staff to make sure that we're not just in compliance, but we're preparing students for the transitions that lie ahead, being, as we say, ready to learn within the buildings and what way, what might we be able to achieve if we make some of these changes. Okay. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Facility use. Um, comment there for me would be that the community supported that project. I mean, it should be a community use, um, especially, uh, Nonprofits, especially when they want to come in. I think the, the policy for me should look at fees for per cost, you know, terror, you know, things like that that could happen. Um, but I'd still like to see the use of the facility for nonprofits in the community not be done. Um, and I think we probably should come up with a separate policy for if anybody from the outside of the community wants to try to come in uh, and raise that way. We've been doing that okay. at the policy meeting. We've been looking at that. I don't think you've seen the fee schedules from their schools. No. That we've been privy to. Yeah. We'll get that to you, but we definitely need to sit down as a board and discuss this. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of pros and cons. There's different schedules for nonprofits. We can only open it up to nonprofits if we want to. But custodial use, all that comes into big play. I get what you're saying. We're getting more into this with the among ourselves. Yeah. I get what you're saying about the community. It costs us a lot of money to clean up and do things like that. Well, I communities can go and charge the community for field uses or some field uses, but well, if there's a janitor involved, then they have to pay a janitor, obviously. It's going to come down to non Goshen groups and Goshen groups. And sure. You know, obviously, Goshen groups will go first, but we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, I think it should come down to community. Yeah, and if you see the examples, you'll see they are graduated. You know, some of the things that we've been looking at speak to exactly what you just yeah. brought up. It just, it, it, for both our director of facilities, myself, and these land on our desk, the process needs, and I'm not deferring responsibility. As administration, we will take whatever the board policy is and implement that policy. Right. But the policy needs to be clear for us so that when we get an application on our desk, we know if A, then B, if C, then D. Right now, there's some gray. Yeah, well, there's a lot of gray, if you will, and we need, we need to clear that up. And I think looking at some of the examples and looking at that in combination, to your point, that the investment that the community has made, that they have proper access, but at the same time, we can protect 
the longevity of those facilities at the same time. Absolutely. Maybe the policy committee can forward that out. Yeah. We can start that discussion. And that will take time. Yeah. Uh, I've been through this process before. <laughs> to, to come to a mutual agreement, this, this is not easy. Any other comments on facilities? Okay, the HVAC plan. I think we'll probably have more comments after we hear from Land tonight. Um, Yeah, just the one thing I'll encourage the board to, to keep in mind, Re regardless of what scope of work the board charges administration with moving forward with, there's, there's unless the state changes course, and let's remember that money is coming from the federal government, and I don't know that the federal government is going to give much leeway on some of the ties that has <coughs> that money being expended. There's going to be a time in this factor. Yeah, has, there, so, has there been a clarification on the deadline usage? Of that? <coughs> As of right now, it's it's a two-year rollout. It's a 23, 24 rollout. So, and I'll ask Matt to, to share what he you know, came yeah. up with from facility planning yeah. from Albany tonight as well. I think that's a key. Yeah, that's a key point. Not that I want to, and I'm not saying let's rush and do the wrong thing. No. But let's make sure that we move forward in time with that. I think the, I think the obvious thing is all at once how do we approach it yeah um, but i think we'll have to listen to that and yep. we'll hear our associates tonight to talk about that any other comments on that or you want to go in on that one um i'm just going to mention maybe one or two things that we could discuss um do we want to Talk about social emotional at all, as far as the potential goal and objective. So I, I think that would fit neatly as a bullet point under the guidance plan. Okay. Because realistically, if we are looking at appropriate staffing within each building and looking at program within each building, that can be codified very clearly in that section. What I'm seeing and noticing just from observation of the community and the different programs volunteering. Kids are, are still adjusting um, with the social interaction and how they interact not only with their teachers but with their peers. And um, maybe I can go back to the to the to buildings somehow. I know we did some we talked about anti-bullying in the past, but maybe we just need to do a niceness training or a review or, or something. Um, I think that's becoming. So I mean, that could lead to bullying and different things and stuff like that. So maybe, maybe we can kind of um, we put, kick that in and get the program going again. So at each level from the beginning of this year, each building has been using resources for tying down social emotional learning. At the high school, they've been uh, using specific lessons for the Castle standards. The middle school brought in um, NY Cope uh, earlier this year. Where's Ms. Dr. Wemwood, if you're right in front of me, help fill in for me. GIS has been using. Uh, we just brought in uh, Quaver SEL to start utilizing, and we're continuing with our kindness weeks. We and we just raised it. We use Quaver as our PDIS to um, upgrade our All Star program as well. Try to hone in on on those behaviors we're seeing change. Yeah. And Scotchtown, uh, several individuals had gone for the Choose Love training last year and had been using components of it. But one of the things that we did here loud and clear during our staff development day this year was that there was a need for more. And universally, K-12 will be uh, going for the Choose Love piece as well. But that had been started during last school year also. Okay, so we can tie that into the guidance? Yep. Yeah. Do we have a lot? Anybody else? The last piece I had maybe that we want to we talk about, we talked about in committee, was in the tech committee, there was some type of tech plan. I know there's been, um, obviously tech is going to be more and more of our educational future, not less. And uh, as we go through this year, in your first year, we talked about finding efficiencies 
to increase our, our investment impact and our training impact. Um, do we want to try to figure out something there, whole objective, or what are your, what are your thoughts? What What would the board want the scope of that committee to be? I have about? no idea. I, I, well, <laughs> so my recommendation would be, if, if we were going to add that, would be to look at really looking at our device policy. Because I will say, even though we have codified the families what the device policy is and have them sign off, we've maybe had 12 breakages, 15 breakages come in, and we're still getting a lot of pushback, to be honest with you. Because I think we had one family give restitution to the district with a broken device. So if we want to focus purely on the device policy, that may be something we could achieve. I think trying at this point in the year to do much more is going to be difficult. Can can we? I still hear from the parents that you don't even know how to access your child to close the classroom and things like that. Can we do something? I know we did training in the past, Jonathan. We held some Google nights for parents. Um, maybe we either we can a do that as part of the objective, and or b a and b maybe we can do it digitally too. We can post some things or send them out and make them available. Okay. Um, I think that obviously this is one of the more, more important that we need to encourage the digital life here sure. in the school. And now it was well received with Jonathan's night that he was doing. Okay. Maybe even maybe we can do that on a digital and post it as some videos and things like that. Okay. So I think if we did go that direction, and maybe you can think about this before we get the final draft, maybe we can do either like a device section of technology, maybe a training parent type thing in there as well. <clears throat> so one of the things that we have to do every year to submit to New York State is, well, it's every five, John, sorry, three, every three years is submit our uh, tech plan. That will be due later this year. This will be something that would fit neatly into that. Okay. We've, at least, we've at least pulled the application and pulled what the framework looks like of what the state is looking at. It's pretty broad, but I think if we can pick out a few aspects of that to fit in, obviously many of them are not going to be achievable in that short time frame. But looking at the short time frame between now and the end of June to at least set a benchmark is reasonable. Okay. Any other comments? How do we how do we start creating the district strategic plan? So I'm going to recommend if the board is in support of this that for the first time through this process that we work with a consultant. A consultant that's done this many many times with different districts around the region. Some will move forward with no consultant, but they've been through the process before. What a consultant will do is they will come in and help write the survey that goes out to all the stakeholders, they will meet with the stakeholders, they will take all that information and sell it together in a presentation to the Board of Education, which then allows the board to work with the administration to really codify what's that plan going to look like. What are your short term, what are your medium term, what are your long term goals? That whole process, it, it's difficult. It, it's not easy to get through, because remember, you've taken the voice of your community, you're taking the voice of your students, you're taking the voice of your Board of Education, and you're taking the voice of your staff, and that all has to come together. Some of those items simply aren't going to be included. There are going to be issues where you take some of those issues from the survey, come over here to transportation, and you say, this is a department issue, we need to work this out. This doesn't need to be part of our goal. Same thing with the buildings at the same time. Some of them belong just in the buildings as something that a parent was upset about, you need to get it worked out. Some of them are really on programmatic and systematic improvements that the district really needs to consider making. I'm going to recommend for the first time going through this in many, many years that we really need someone to come in and help us do it. And I'd like to say it's great to see you guys. All the administrators are here. I forgot what that corner looked like so far. It's awesome. Um, but if you look at these goals, which, you know, the HVAC, all this stuff, everything was great, the strategic plan. But well, what do those guys want? I want to see more. I would like to see more input from them because they're in the buildings all the time. 
I don't know how to move it. Either maybe they create a goal and objective for their building. I don't know. And collaboratively, but I always like to know what they have to say because they're on the front line. So I don't want to put the administration on the spot, but the board's asking. I just did. You, you just heard four to five goals I've articulated to the board. Anything you want to add? Anything that you want to share? Anything that was not there that's glaringly missing? And you don't all have to speak at once. <laughs> You can get back to us. I mean, if, if that's something I can just add, that's what the consultant then is going to do. Meeting with that part of the street. So, so the strategic plan, the strategic plan would meet with the leadership of the teachers, administrators, community, board. They'll they will meet with everyone. Yeah, because it's hard to kind of get it down to like very specific. Because my mind's going already like building it, condition survey. Like all the, the bigger global events. I don't know. If you, I don't know if you had a chance to look at any yeah. of those district no, examples. Yeah. It goes from right. all the way out of here right. all of a sudden down to something yeah. that's managed. Yeah. It's not an easy process. Right. But that being said, let, let's use budget planning as a as an example with a strategic plan. When you have a strategic plan, the first thing that you do when you start <coughs> to plan your budget, what are your priorities? You're not all over the place from a building administrator to a department administrative level. It allows them, when they have to submit budget pr proposals to central office, to know, hey, yes, well, I have some specific building level goals. I need to be in this lane with my budget this year. Don't bring something completely out of left field. Any further? Comments? Or everybody good? Okay. So I will work then on the update that we spoke about in relation to technology for our next meeting. I'll, I'll get this out. Uh, Maureen was helping me. Thank you, Maureen, for taking notes. I'll get this out prior to the beginning of our next meeting. If the board's comfortable with it, we can move forward with acceptance and adoption for this year's results and objectives. Then I can put it in super. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you can go ahead and move over here, right? So, 